Wallace set to drop in. Very impressive young man. The pride of the Steel City now resides over and over again. Wallace is flawless. Look at that. 92.75. Tommy Wallace into first place. Tom Wallace has won every major ski slope style competition. Tom Wallace is on fire right now. Wallace catapults to the lead with one competitive score. Tom Wallace has set history with the highest score in ski slope style history here in 2012. In 2013, I tore my ACL and then with a torn ACL couldn't compete in the Olympics or tried to but didn't make it. And all the time I do think back on like, oh, what if I would have won the Olympics? I was healthy that year, but like really like I've realized so much over the years that you learn so much from those injuries and all those past accomplishments are really amazing and it's amazing memories. But yeah, I think I get more fulfillment and I feel busier and more rewarded now by sharing more of my knowledge and sharing success with others. So I was born and raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and grew up skiing at Seven Springs and Wisp Mountain in Maryland. And I probably learned when I was three or so my parents got me skiing, but I don't really remember any of the first years. I hope my story of coming up in Pennsylvania, a, a state really that's not known for producing any good skiers of any kind, that like you can grow up anywhere. You don't have to expect to be born and move or move to Breckenridge to become a pro skier. You can learn these tricks anywhere. And also that's the beauty of video and social media now. I mean, I came up in skiing from making videos, getting notoriety on the internet because of the tricks I could do, the rail tricks I did, and the way the videos were put together. It's funny now, like you look back at things like winning an X Games gold medal or level one productions, winning super unknown and getting to go on trips from other pro skiers taking me on trips, different film productions paying my way to get out there hitting urban rails or on a backcountry trip and there's uh, sliding the world's longest rail and all these like linear timeline accomplishments that seem so great like they're so personal and it's just me really and it feels like it's just you now as i get older i see so much more love and, and enjoyment i get so much more enjoyment out of will this encourage other people to go skiing does it make it fun does it make it accessible does it make it seem relevant and appropriate and cool and if it doesn't I, i'm probably not doing it when I was a kid, rail jams were a huge thing. And what a rail jam is, is just everybody getting together and a judged event that isn't so strict. It's a rail setup and you do your craziest tricks, you all hike together, you ski together, and eventually somebody wins, usually pr prize money and cash. And it was a huge thing on the East Coast when I was a kid. And it was probably the only way I like afforded new skis or new jacket that year was because I would go compete in a rail jam and end up winning and it was like taught me so much about competing about perseverance about learning new tricks the level you need to ski and so much about myself and then these events just started going away so the last like 10 years everything now is fist points and world cups and USASA and like these really well managed straightforward pipeline events and a lot less film crews and less events, less rail jams, less local open qualifier events and opportunities for kids to make a name for themselves. So for me, I feel like I had that chance and the kids nowadays deserve that chance. Very good evening here from Seven Springs, Pennsylvania, everyone, and welcome to the Steel City Showdown, an event that Mr. Tom Wallace dreamed up and well bring it to fruition out here. I mean, he is just fully immersed in this event and uh, what a great host to have. My whole goal with Steel City Showdown is to bring back rail jams and to bring events back to the East Coast where you don't see events on the East Coast anymore. It's all at unattainable places like Copper or Park City or Mammoth, these big, beautiful resorts. But as a kid from the Midwest or East Coast, like it's unaffordable to get out there. So that's really been my goal as I get older is to find more ways to give opportunities to the kids that I see out there that are exactly like me, an East Coaster, 
that's hungry but doesn't have the access to the big jumps or the big hill but is so good at maybe rails or one aspect of skiing and just needs one shot to get out there and literally like so hungry they are gonna die for it and that's just so cool to see so I hope my story can inspire kids that it isn't always about bigger and better and, and going somewhere crazy but where you are is good enough to, to get good at your sport. The Tom Walsh is, there's no question why he's one of the most emulated skiers. It's virtually indescribable as far as the steps it takes to get to the place where you can just do that at your leisure. It's just the epitome of smooth. Yeah. How easy does he make that look? <laughs> That's <laughs> ridiculous. Holy Wallace. Look at the way he glides into that degree of landing. It's unstoppable. The day I stop, you know, being a professional skier will be the day that I don't feel like I have any more dream tricks or locations or rails. And the day that it comes to a point where I don't have anything else like that, no new tricks, no new accomplishments or features, film projects that I'm seeking out will be the day I, I step back and let somebody else take, take the charge and lead the way. But until then, I'm still seeking out that, that new kink trail behind the park next down the road or that new event that's gonna give kids a chance and trying to just further the sport that I love and also my own individual joy of learning something new and scaring the shit out of myself.